uh, real estate lawyer Denise Lash on the show. Hi, Denise. It's like this is like the Jerry Springer of real estate. <laughs> you guys are laughing off air about some yeah, of the uh, the yeah. stuff that's going on. Well, it's only because and Denise, thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks for your time and being on the air with me. Because <laughs> we talk about you know some of this stuff, and uh, you know it's like I shake my head and go, Not, like you cannot write this stuff. <laughs> this is just hmm. how, how do these things even happen? But. Um, when we started to talk about condominiums and, you know, I invited Denise to come on mm. and talk about condominiums, it wasn't just about specifically law, but right. we we're, ta- we're trying to sort of delve into the, the lifestyle, the experiential yep. um, things that go on, you know, what are people experiencing? Because if you think about a condominium versus a community, like a, a, a suburban community. Yep. It's still a community. It's a stacked. It's stacked community. Yeah. And, and in fact, it's much more intimate. because it's a little everyone, Well, everyone's in the same building, so it's yeah. really quite intimate. So yeah. then it's not just about rules and regs and law, da, 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 but how are people working within that climate and yeah. and uh, habitational environment, sure. for lack of a better word, yeah. right? How are people actually getting along that are coming from all these different parts of the planet? Yeah. That's like being the, in a submarine. That's what Denise and I talk about. So let's talk. What do you got? What uh, what sort of top of mind or top of conversation or at least like what's in front of your uh, computer screen? What's going well, on? Well, I I don't want to keep bringing up the same topic, but, <laughs> but? <laughs> uh, uh, cannabis. I just you know we just are seeing every day something new. So uh, and I know Lou, I had mentioned to you. Um, a lot of boards are proposing the rules prohibiting smoking in the unit, and that's become very controversial. And so there are some buildings that are now prohibiting it, and those rules are going through. And then there's others where the owners are getting together, and it's get, getting very political. And they are really angry that boards want to control what they do in their unit. Mm-hmm. So then there are situations, and what I I came across just last week uh, was a situation in which the owners did not want the rules to go through, and so there's no prohibition on smoking in units, whether it's cannabis or it's tobacco. And I have a situation where this woman has a severe allergy to cannabis, not tobacco, but cannabis, and it's such a severe allergy that she could die oh. if she smells it, right? So so now you have a, a condominium that's going to allow cannabis in the units, and in fact now there are some people smoking in it, and it has affected her. She carries around an EpiPen. Wow. Uh, yeah, and she cannot go to her laundry. The laundry is down the hall, and she cannot go down the la- to the laundry because she has smelt it along the hallway. So, uh, you know, I am acting for her. I am tr- trying to take a position with the condominium corporation that they have to accommodate her. And, and what do they do about it? By cha- so, accommodate her by changing the, the ruling altogether? Well, the owners didn't want the rules to go through, so how do you force the owners? So even if the rules don't go through, can you prohibit people from smoking uh-huh. in it? smoking because it affects others it's a very interesting issue wow so that so that's the one and then the other one she's gonna which is the other extreme is somebody who just emailed me um this morning saying what do you think of the idea of putting a grow up on the roof because our condominium needs money. There's a lot of repairs that have to be done, and the owners don't want a special assessment. And he thinks that it would be a good idea to put a grow up on the roof, and everybody shares the revenue. Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, grow up on the roof. Okay. Well, yeah, but give, yeah, they have to be like. Li- can they get a license for that? <laughs> There's so many legal issues. Um, yeah, first of all, can they get license? And second of all, who is it? Who is it that's going to be running this grow up business? A Who's the kingpin? Yeah, it sounds it. a little a little, sh- a little shady. I'm sorry that that's a bit but of a stretch. You, I mean, uh, yeah, but you know what? Creative, but very creative. <laughs> yeah. Because he said, well, what about the owners get together and form their own corporation uh-huh. and run the grow up and lease the space back to the condominium? So okay, hey, listen, don't never say never. Box, yeah. right? If done right, maybe doable. I don't know. Yeah. This is this is uh, 
you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a condo corporation or whether it's City Hall. Everyone's looking for cash. Everyone's looking for a, a different way to generate money. And in fact, it's so apparent because of some of the stuff that I'm even reading about the Airbnbs and mm, the things that yeah. are falling out on that one are absolutely like insane at how, you know, we were just talking initially when we started the segment about the the neighborhood yeah. and the the experiences. Well, this is another one that's happening. We're going to talk, like, I know we're ending the segment, but we're going to come back with Denise because I want to talk about what's in store for some people that are um, landlords, what to yep. be cautious of mm -hmm. if you're a landlord um, with things like short-term rentals and how it could affect you if you're a landlord and maybe not even know what's going on. Think about that. You could be a landlord and don't even know that you're, well, you're not there. being rented. Right? You're not there. Yeah, you're not there until you happen to see it come up on Airbnb, your address, your unit. Brutal. Right. Okay. We'll